Shut up and invest. Shut up and invest. Shut up and invest. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Shut Up and Invest. J Money's in the house, so we will be okay today. What's up, man? What's up? Everybody out there in Listen Land, on YouTube, all our uh, subscribers, everybody streaming out there. Hope you guys are having a good day. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing good, man. Here, about to knock out a couple shows. We just did a, a mastermind with our internet team on uh, promoting the show and our Facebook ads and our YouTube ads and knock out a couple episodes today and then go get a workout in. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah, we definitely just met with our guy and uh, some PPC, some SEO, you know, just trying to strategize, um, you know, trying to get this out to more people. We're on YouTube, like everybody knows. We've been on there for a few weeks, so make yeah. sure you guys go to our YouTube page. We got about, what, six, six of the YouTubes out already, like? We got about six episodes out there. Um, you know, YouTube page is Shut Up and Invest. Well, actually, by the time this show drops, we probably have about 10 episodes on YouTube. That is true. Yeah. True. That is true. So. Anyway, just look for us on YouTube. <laughs> Shut up and invest. Show us some love. Comment, subscribe. We appreciate and it. And let everybody know. So today, man, what we got? We're going to get into some virtual wholesaling. So virtual wholesaling, man, I'm, I'm going to do the goal next year. In the next 24 months is to do half the year here and half the year anywhere I want. That is true. That is true. And you definitely can do that with virtual wholesaling. Right now, I can't do that because I coach football. <laughs> and but I can't you leave are Miami. Doing it. But I am doing it to well, I am doing it. Yes, I'm doing it in Miami. But I want to be in Miami. You came, to be, Miami came to Miami because virtual of virtual wholesaling. wholesaling. Yeah. I virtual wholesale. That's all I do actually. So I don't know why I just said that. But I can't travel as much as I want to travel yet, because I'm still <laughs> Coaching football, but one day I'll be able to go to like you know Columbia with Kevin for a month uh, <laughs> and do it there. One more year of coaching football, right? Edit that. <laughs> we don't know yet. We're still decided. They're trying to keep you. They're trying to hold you down. Every time I try to leave, they pull me back. <laughs> but your son's going into his senior year, right? My son's graduating. Yeah. Yep, so after senior, your son's so gone, they're gonna have to sweeten the pot it and, and see what we got going on. Yeah, tell them if Definitely. they don't if they don't give you a shut up and invest check, <laughs> your son's not there anymore. Miami Dade School District, man, you gotta talk to them. That's yeah. who, that's who pays us for football, so they're not cutting the checks yet. <laughs> but <laughs> virtual wholesaling, man, like that's allowed me to actually live where I want to live. I mean, I live in Miami, and I do ninety nine percent of my deals in in the the cold. Midwest and the North, you know, and through virtual wholesaling, I've been allowed to live the life I want to live. You know? Yeah. Why don't we break down what virtual wholesaling is? I know we've talked about investing and wholesaling, all this, but essentially virtual means you're playing in a market that you don't live in. Exactly. It means that you can sell homes in this place and live in somewhere else. And, you know, nowadays with the Internet, which is how amazing it is with social media, you know, we really as real estate investors, you really can do this job from wherever you want. Right. You know, if you build a system, build a team, have boots on the ground, you can really do this job from literally anywhere in the world. Um, and that's amazing. You know, it wasn't like that before. Back in the day, you had to be in that city, that town, you had to get the map out. <laughs> now, everything's virtual. <clears throat> yeah, man. Especially you could jump online and literally between Google Maps and Zillow and Realtor.com and Redfin, you are pretty much... Take a look at any property. Yeah, I mean, we all have our distaste for Zillow, but if you use Zillow the right way, you can find comps. You know, don't just take the Zestimate, but you, they got map tools, they got drawing tools. You can definitely use Zillow to find some true they comps. They got the pictures of the property. Yep, yep. Now, let's break down your, the biggest moneymaker city for you right now. Is it Harrisburg or Michigan? It's Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. I got. I, I kind of have two strategies. Michigan is where I do most of my... Um, wholesaling at. Um, I'm a licensed realtor in Michigan. That's where I've been selling real estate since 07. So I have a huge buyer's list. And I mean, technically, I only sell to a small portion of it because they're my, you know, everyday buyers. But Michigan is definitely where I do most of my wholesale deals at. Harrisburg, I am wholesaling, but I'm also doing more buy and holds, right? So Harrisburg is where I'm doing more buy and holds. Where you're building out the portfolio. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm from I'm from Pennsylvania. I have a lot of roots as far as family and friends in Harrisburg, you know, so I'm looking to buy and hold more there. And I'm buying and holding in Michigan too. But right now, this year, we've bought a lot to buy and hold in Harrisburg. Yeah. Which we're going to switch over to Michigan because we got that, yes. that loan program that we can refi out and get our money back after we acquire that property. So we'll talk a little bit we about basically that. basically the berm at the right? 
Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, yeah. So we'll break that down too. So, all right. So let's go to Michigan right now. Yep. The money maker. You have boots on the ground over there. I have boots on the ground. Yep. I have boots on the ground in Michigan. Um, which somebody asked me a question, not me, but in general, someone asked a question: What's the best market to virtual wholesale in? Someone asked us on Facebook group, and I saw it, and they just asked a random question. They're not even in any market right now, and I said, you know. I, I don't think someone else can answer that question for you, right? In my opinion, yes, there are markets that are better markets to do real estate in, right? But if you're virtual wholesaling, I think that question comes down to you, right? Where do you have boots on the ground at where you can have a system, right? So for me, you know, I have boots on the ground in Michigan, pretty much. I'm in West Michigan. I have, you know, a couple of different people who are actually like acquisitions, you would say, who are doing the acquisitions parts of the, of, the, um, of the game. I have title company, you know, shout out to Deanna and Tamara. They're an amazing title company, Iron Gate Title in West Michigan that does all my deals, everything. Um, and then I have contractors, you know, who kind of come in here and give me bids and give me estimates and prices. And that's pretty much my, my team on the ground. You know, the rest of that stuff is all done virtual. And the funny thing is my marketing director for Michigan is in Indianapolis. You know, that's also who's doing our stuff down here in Florida. Right. Um, you know, the, the call, the calling, you know, we use systems for calling. I can be anywhere. So, but the boots in the ground, I have them, you know, a couple guys in Michigan that do most of the work. All right. So let's walk through a typical lead flow all the way through closing in Michigan while you're in Miami, Got right it. before you're trying to take your kids to school <laughs> and then go to coach football yep. and then make sure the wifey's happy. Getting some of her beach, <laughs> her beach time, her beach vibe, <laughs> which was the purpose of moving to Miami. That is, listen, getting beach. Jackie beach wanted time her beach time. In. Jackie's from Michigan. Jackie's from the Upper Peninsula, of Michigan, but she cannot stay in the cold at all, right? So we like basically, she was like, "Listen, we're moving to Miami. You can do this wherever you want." She forced me to become a virtual wholesaler. I thank you for that, honey. But you know, she needs to have her son, her son and fun. So a typical deal. Let's say, uh, I mean, right now, I, I'm still very, very, very heavy in direct mail in Michigan, and right. it works, you know. So you're sending how many mail pieces a week in that area right now? At, at least 1,000. Minimum 1,000, right? A week. A week, yeah. Okay. Um, for instance, last week, we sent 3,100 pieces of mail. Okay. To which list? Um, it was a non-owner-occupant high-equity list. Okay. So non-owner-occupied, meaning the person doesn't live in the property, mm -hmm. so they're an investor, not yep. a... And high equity means they owe very little to nothing on the property. So there's a high equity means big profits. Exactly. Yep. And that's my number one list. I mean, there's a lot of niche lists that we do, but the number one list that we send out is, and that's a broad list. You're going to hit a lot of different people with that list, right? Is that non owner occupant high equity list? Right, so you one. sent 3,100 pieces last week. Last week. For a cost of? Cost us a thousand dollars, around a thousand dollars, like like nine ninety seven. Okay. Yeah. And then on average from that, you'll get about how many calls already this week from it? We got about, I think, eighty seven. We got about eighty seven calls so far this week. Mm -hmm. And that'll last. That mailing will last calls for what the next? I mean, the next few weeks. But again, I mean, I'll get a call. I'll I will get a call in two months from now from this mailing. Right. From someone yeah, who you'll always get but, the yeah. year long. But usually stragglers. for about three weeks, you'll have calls trickle in. Right. right? For about three weeks. Um, that, you know, that they're still say, hey, you sent me a postcard and it could have been two weeks ago. Right. Okay. So a call comes in, one of these 87 calls. Yep. Call comes in. Um, right now, I still do field a lot of calls, right? If I don't field, I have two other people that, that will field them for me. But, and if we don't field them, we'll just drop a, they'll drop a voicemail on our call rail. Right. And then you can go to, Shut up and invest in any one of the podcast platforms and you'll hear us take those calls. So you, you want to hear what a call sounds like when they call back from this, go back to one of the previous episodes and we have a call case study mm -hmm. that you can listen to. Yep. So in uh, in the West Michigan market, the call came in. I'd answer, you know, I'd answer the call. On that call, I'm going to get information, right? Pretty much to get the seller's name, the address of the property, then I want to get as much information about the property I can get. Right? Let, them, let them tell us about the property. Right. Let me let me interrupt you there because there's a lot of systems that if you're sitting in front of the computer, it'll tell you who's calling. It'll give you that information. But yes. you're truly living the virtual wholesale life and you're not getting caught up too much. You, you'll be in the grocery store. You'll be here in the office. <laughs> you'll be in your house. You'll be on the football field mm -hmm. coming off of coaching. If you get a call... 
that conversation, you're already trained to say, oh, which property is it? Okay. And you're taking down the address, what, in a notebook or? Well, no, I, have, I use CallRail. So that's why I use CallRail because CallRail records your calls. So mm. I don't have to do that. I'm you're just, just talking. You'll just know the number and you'll go back go and back. get all the info. Exactly. I'll go back, listen to the call again, follow up like that way. So usually, because that's, that's my life. You know, I'm busy. I'm going all over. So usually, you know, end of my day, I'll come back go through all the calls, right? Go to my CRM, make notes in the CRM, schedule the appointment. So um, while you're on the call, you're just flowing. I'm just flowing. You're not worried about taking notes or anything because you know you can go back to the call because it's being recorded. Exactly. And yep. if you guys want access to these tools or whatever that we use that do these things, go to shutupandinvest.com and you'll go ahead and sign up for the email address and you'll get access to all these tools and how they work. We have a, a breakdown. And that call row too allows that call to be, you know, it, it flows well because I'm just talking to a seller like, you know, I'm talking to you, mm-hmm. right? Hey, how you doing? Because the main thing about the calls rapport, right? Because I'll tell you, and Kevin will tell you both, I close a lot of deals over the phone. Now, now we still go out and see him, but that deal's closed over the phone. Like usually before my guys go out to the house, if the if the price range is what we like, it's close over the phone, right? right? Because that phone call is more of me listening to them and what's going on with them than it is of, you know, the actual house. Right. Right. So you're getting property info on the call. That's the first, first stage thing. of the call. Yep. Then you're getting the condition of the property. Correct. And then I'm trying to find the motivation, right? You're calling me. You obviously want to sell. Because you didn't yell at me, you didn't cuss me out, you didn't hang up. <laughs> we got to this point, so you want to sell. And think about, even the people who say, well, I don't really want to sell, if they tell you all the information, they want to sell. Because they will say, oh, you know, I'm not trying to sell, but you sent me a postcard, right? But if they get to that point, they want to sell. Right, so let, let's let's go through that real quick. All right. Hey, yeah, you sent me a postcard. I'm not really looking to sell. It's like, okay, no problem. I'm just curious, you know. What type of property? You go right into the condition of the property. I go right in that, yeah. Because they might be like, you know, th- this is what they always say. I'm just interested to see what my house might be worth right now. That's the word they always use, right? Mm-hmm. And then I go flow right into, right into, okay, well, can you tell me a little bit of information about the house? How many bedrooms? How many baths? You know, what, what, you know, what, what how many You know feet? that if they start going down that road, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. It's, it's, Even it's if lead. they said, I'm not really looking to sell. I'm just trying to see how much it's worth. Exactly. And then again, I mean, because I'm licensed, it might not be a wholesale deal. It might be a listing that I'll refer to an agent up there and get a referral fee from. You know, that's the power of being licensed too. Right. You know, and you do the same, you know, you do the same thing. Right. So they get to that point, they basically break down the information about the house, you know, the condition of the house. Then, then I want to find out, you know, what is their number or number range? Because again, I know a lot of guys, you know, might just send everybody to an appointment. But because I'm virtual, I don't want to just send people to every single house. I'm trying to find out, is this worth, you know, or is it close to, you know, worth going out? And everyone won't tell you that number, you know. But I try to get to the motivation. You know, why are you looking to sell? And the key is, if I can make you a cash offer, let's say the house fits for us to make you a cash offer today, you know, what kind of number do you need, you know, for this to make sense for you? Because I'm trying to find out what they want out of this deal. Right. Right. Another good one is... um. I haven't done the research yet, but a house fixed up in that area, how much do you think they're going for all fixed up? Oh, well, these houses all fixed up are going for 70000 or 300000 Oh, okay. And in the condition you just told me, what do you think you can get? Mm-hmm. So now they're just comparing to, I gave them the amount where it's the full, mm-hmm. you know, if it's completely tricked out, fully renovated, what is it? They're like, oh, three fifty. Okay, and then after the breakdown you just gave me, <laughs> what do you think you can get? Now they're like, oh, okay, well, I can't saying, get oh. 350 Yeah. So I'm hoping to get 300 Now I know what they're thinking without saying, what offer do you want exactly. from me? And, and then, then you, the next question is, is that negotiable? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, can we work with that? Is there some wiggle room there? And then I'm feeling it out. So that's another kind of backdoor way of trying to figure out a price range. And that's smart because you're seeing what kind of seller you're dealing with, right? Because we all have the seller who like their house needs 50 grand. They think it's worth the ARV of his estimate that's fully, fully rehab, you know? Yeah. And you need to kind of know what kind of seller you're dealing with before you kind of go into negotiations. Yeah, we, we had one this week where here in Miami where they wanted 280 and there's not a comparable over 215. <laughs> and it needs work. <laughs> 
And yes. And then what you do? What did you do? No, we were like, all right, cool, no problem. Mm -hmm. Now, what makes you think that you can get 280 for it? Where'd you get that number from? Is there a house around that area that sold for that price range that maybe I'm not seeing? Mm -hmm. And then I put it on them to justify and explain where's that 280 coming from. And if they can't explain it, I'm like, Kind of makes it tough if we can't find another property in the area for 280. Mm-hmm. And then I just stay quiet. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the the power of being quiet. Yesterday, I'm driving with my daughter in the car, and uh, I get a call. I'm picking my daughter from gymnastics, right? We're driving back home. I get a call that comes in. It was funny. So this house we had on the contract in December, and the numbers didn't make sense after our inspections, and, and the seller disappeared, and then... You know, we just kind of lost connection with each other. And I literally was talking to my acquisition guy on Tuesday. He goes, man, I, I drove by that house today. You know, what's up with that? I said, I don't know where that seller is at. She hasn't answered the phone, nothing. They that seller ghost. called me <laughs> yesterday, right? Called me yesterday. So we're breaking down on what happened in the first deal. I told him, that, you know what? I'm still interested in the property. The number just doesn't make sense from where we're at. You know, so what number, you know, what can you do to help me out? Like, what number can you do? And I went quiet. And she went quiet. And it was like, my daughter's like, are you going to talk? I'm like, no, I'm be quiet. It was, a, it was like a, a minute of quietness. Right? Those are the moments I where I go, there. <laughs> And I'm like this, like, uh, yes, yes. A Western showdown. <laughs> Every second that passed by, it's like, I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. <laughs> Who's going for the gun? Who's going for the gun first? And that's what it was, man. We just, it was a stare down between the phone, right? Just sitting there like, yeah, I'm not going to budge. I'm not going to budge. And she came back. Gave me her number. I'm like, yeah, I need to be like two grand below that, <laughs> you know? And we got basically to like 500 bucks of where, you know, I'm good at where we're at. But that quiet place is the place where the money's made. So now the CPR is back on that deal. You brought it back we to got life. It back. We got the contract back. Uh, I sent yeah. it to her last night via dot loop. We're back in the game. And in, in virtual wholesaling, right? Because there's a whole different side of this game. And we'll do a couple episodes when you're, at the property and you're negotiating at the property. What we're talking about is, and it's huge in virtual wholesaling, is the phone game. Yeah, yeah. That's the game. And mastering this dance on the phone, mastering quiet time, letting them justify Mm -hmm. what they're thinking, uncovering the motivation like you were saying, that is kind of the art of Mm -hmm. the wholesale dance Mm -hmm. on the phone. It definitely is. If you're not a good listener, then you're not going to be able to master virtual hosting over the phone because it's more about listening, letting them talk, right? And being able, like you said, to navigate the different, you know, personality types, the different, you know, seller types. If you're talking more than they are, chances are it's not going good. It's not. Because if I would have opened my mouth and said a number before she did, you know, she came and told me a number. Then she told me a number because she said, well... I just got an offer for this price. So now I know there's another buyer out there and I know what number he's at, right? Because I let her talk and talk and talk. So listen, to it. hey, listen. And you didn't give him first. You were I didn't like, give oh, him man, up. it's been 15 seconds. I'm going to lose this opportunity. Mm. Oh, it's been 20 seconds. Why are we quiet here? Oh, my God. <laughs> let me start explaining myself and let me start trying to sell. Honestly, Kevin, I would have been quiet for as long as it took. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to talk, you know, because I told her what I, you know, basically I said, look, what do you need now? The fact that she's thinking about it means she's going to say something eventually, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was just our negotiation. So, yeah. All right. So you go through the stage three, which is uncovering the motivation. Uncover the motivation. Uncovering price. Uncovering price. After I get past that stage, you know, then my question is, you know, all right, when's a good day and time for us to come out and see the house? You know, I have a partner or one of my associates will come out to the house. Let me know what works for you. Because I don't know, you know, I, I want to see what their schedule is. So I want to get a couple of days So if times. it's in the range that you know in that area, you can make it work. We'll schedule it right then. You'll schedule it right there on the spot. Yeah. And then you'll send your boots on the ground, going back to whoever your boots on the ground is, to go over there. So now let's break down. What's the strategy what's the purpose of when they go to the property got it so when they go first of all they don't negotiate much right and the guys that have in michigan are like agents and investors i mean they they negotiate but because i talk on the phone first they go out there and just kind of again they're trying to hear they're trying to fill out you know what's going on to get more information to give to me you know for our final offer but the main goal is to get as many 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 detailed pictures of the property as you can right not 
in Michigan, it's not even for me to evaluate because when they come back to me, they have all the information I need for the price because these guys are seasoned. It's for our marketing, right? When we get the house locked up, we want to be able to have as much information about the house for marketing because, again, it's virtual, right? So I'm the one handling all the disposition from Miami, right? Even though they're there, I do most of, mostly all the disposition unless they have a buyer they already know. Right. Most of our disposition is done through email, social media, pictures, and information. Right? And what that means is Actually, once you got the deal, looking to sell it to an sell it to somebody else. Yep. So when they're there, again, they're going to build more rapport, right? They're building rapport because it's it's the company. We want them to like the company, right? So they're going to talk to them, listen to out, hear them out, listen around, um, find out what's going on in the house. They're going to walk through that house, you know, with their camera, look at every detail of the house to see, you know, what kind of issues does this house have, right? And when that's done, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you know, thank you. Um, Joy will give you a call back here in a few hours after I talk to him and send him the pictures. Right. Their next step is they will either text me a file with a picture or they'll upload the picture to Google Drive. All right. Most of everything we do for as far as the pictures is in Google Drive. So they'll send that to me. I'll come back when I can, review all the pictures, look at the pictures, you know, talk to them, find out, hey, you know, what's going on with the house? Is there something I can't see that, you know, maybe there's a foundation issue. I can't see. Oh, yeah, this, the foundation had a bow in it. You know, we need to account for that. Right, because on the phone, they may not tell you the roof has leaks or... They usually don't. The <laughs> bathroom is busted <laughs> or any of that. So mm -hmm. a person that goes there can look at it, take a picture, give you feedback. Um, Christina Spells, mm -hmm. big-time investor out in St. Louis, shout out to her. She sent me a website that I'm going to look into and try, and it's great for virtual wholesaling, too. That it's all nationwide, and I think for like less than a hundred dollars, they'll send out someone to take pictures and video of the property and do that. I've heard about that. I don't know the name of that site, but I definitely know there's one out there. Got it there saved. I'll say if you guys want the site, I don't know off the top of my head, but I have it there saved. Hit us up on a on yep. a, on any of our social media platforms or on the website, and I'll send it over to you. And that's the thing. I mean, you know, my boots in the ground in Michigan are seasoned guys because you know. I know these guys really where I was there. Let's say you have a different market and just say, hey, I want to be in this market. You don't have those boots on the ground. There are platforms like that, plenty of them out there where you can, you know, make that happen. Also, you know, we do some stuff in other markets where we have a contractor who does work for us and he does that. You know, he doesn't talk to the seller at all. <laughs> you know, he just goes out there to let me know what the numbers are, you know. Right. Or you can reach out to a local agent that wants to partner with you and Definitely. say, Go check this out and basically go give me a broker, broker price opinion on this. Yep. What do you think we could list this for on the market? That way I know what our cash offer is going to be. I'm calculating that and I'm working on that. This agent's going to go out there, analyze the property, look at it, and is going to try to decide if we put it out on the market on the MLS mm -hmm. and if we list it at top dollar, what's it going to be? That way, I have two options. And that's always been my secret sauce. Yeah. I know people say, oh, realtors don't work with wholesalers. They do. Just find the ones who know what wholesaling is. Yeah. That's the issue. It's not that they don't work with wholesalers. The majority of realtors don't know what wholesaling is because they're just retail realtors, right? Realtors have niches. So find the one who works with investors who will love to do that because, hey, first of all, he's looking at deals for his buyers, right? His investors. Um, you know, I, I have... Like I said, all the guys who do the stuff for me in Michigan are realtors, and they love doing it. So yeah, and and again, I'm feeding them a ton of listing opportunities because Definitely. not every single person is going to be booking our cash deal. They're not. The majority aren't probably. So you know? it's like, no, you know what? I want top dollar for it. All right, no problem. We can help you. Yep, we'll get it for you. Yep. So yeah, so after I get that information as far as pictures and stuff, then. I will make my, another, my next phone call. This phone call is when I'm going to make the offer, try to get the offer accepted, then move on to the next step, right? So on that, on that phone call, again, I'm the one who's going to negotiate over the phone. I'm the one who's going to get the final offer, yes or no, right? Let's say we negotiate, they agree to a price, right? We have an offer accepted. The next step would be I'm going to send them the offer via DocuSign or Dot Loop. So again, all virtual, all virtual. Now, there are instances where people don't have email, especially elderly. They, they don't use email. I'll have my guy on the ground, go back out, meet with them, get the contract signed. Right. Now, let's go back to this negotiation over the phone because I think this is where people definitely want to know more about. And, mm -hmm. and I think we need to do a whole show on that. We might do the Just next episode on that one, negotiation. But on average, how long does it take 
and just give us the Cliff Notes version of what that looks like. So, again, you know, each call is different, but on average, I'm probably going to be on the phone for about probably five minutes. I mean, yesterday I was on the phone for 30 seconds. The guy hung up on me. <laughs> when you gave him the offer? I didn't even give him the offer, right? So... After you saw that property, then he hung up on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My guy saw the property, and the guy was cool. We were like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. We had already made plans. You know, we're going to be able to do this, probably buy and hold it. Uh, what had happened is we had just bought two homes, and that's, like, right across the street from this one. So on my phone call to the seller, you know, hey, this is how it went. Hey, you know, this is Jory. I know you just met my partner. You know, I wanted to give you a call back, you know, kind of let you know where we're at as far as price and see, you know, if we can make this happen. You know, hey, yeah, yeah, what are you thinking? You know, well... And I got some good comps because I, we just bought two houses across the street. You know, the one house was a four bedroom, yours is a three bedroom. You know, and uh, we paid about fifty five thousand for those. You're nowhere close. Click. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so that's what that is. Now, the honest truth is, he's nowhere close to what he'll ever get for his house. Right? It wasn't me. I actually the fifty five. What I told him was honest truth. We did pay that for a, a property in better condition. So there's no way I'm gonna pay more than that. You know, for your house. For his, right. But that call ended. I did text him back, like, hey, I might pay more if, you know, give me a call back because I would, I would do more sort of financing. That was going to be an option. Right. You know, but he just was like, no, you're not even close. Yeah. <laughs> so that call was quick. His but motivation wasn't as high as others. No. Uh, I thought and that it was happens. Really that's part of the game. It does happen. But on average, you're probably about five minutes, you know. It's, we've already talked the first time, right? My guy's already been out there the second time. This is the third contact with this person, right? So at this point... You know, we pretty much know each other, and we're gonna. They want to get to the number. The seller wants to know. They like usually they're like, okay, what do you got? Like, get to the number. They don't want to have too much more small talk. You know, right. it's a negotiation back and forth. You know, right. I kind of ease in with my number. Um, again, I'm trying to be like making sure that I kind of have a feel of where they're at, so I don't insult them and get hung up on. Right. <laughs> but um, you know, that call is usually about five minutes. Yeah, yeah. We'll do actually the next show. We should just role play the whole thing on the phone. We, we should. On there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. And then yeah. you wrap it up. You send it. You get an e sign. They accept it. I get an e signature. Right. It comes back to me. I then forward that to my title company. Um, and then after that part, the key to that part, this is key after you get a deal accepted. And I think a lot of people miss this. This is a seller, right? Who's selling the house to me? They never met me, mm -hmm. right? Remember, they met some other guys, but they're not me. It's still virtual, you know. You have to stay in contact with them, you know. Either me or an admin transaction coordinator usually stays in contact with them throughout the process because they don't know the process, right? All right, it's with title company. It's going to take about two to three weeks for title to come back. Like, make sure you're talking to them twice a week, three times so a week. So they don't think it goes cold. So don't think you go, yeah. So they don't think you disappear. And also, remember, this is the wild, wild west. Other wholesalers are still out there trying to get that deal. You know, they've already, whenever I get any deal I'm, I'm on right now, I guarantee you they've talked to about three or four people. Those other people are still trying to get in on that deal. You have to still massage them and counsel them through the whole day. Let deal. them know they're under contract. Let them know they, they can't know. sign another contract. I've had multiple times where people have signed multiple contracts. I'm like, you have a contract with me? Oh, well, this guy came by too. If it doesn't work out with you, I'm like, no, you can't sign another contract. We have a, you know, we have a contract. So the key from contract accepted to close is to kind of coach them through. Again, you have to have buyers come through. Let them know, hey, somebody needs to come through today. Is that okay? So yeah, that's us, on Tuesdays. If you... If you haven't already had contact with them up until that point, no matter what on a Tuesday, you're just calling them and giving them an update of where we're at. Hey, we're still waiting on That's title. A great, that's a great, great hey, we're point. So Tuesdays is Pipeline Tuesdays. We're talking you really, to everybody who's in the pipeline on Tuesday, no matter what. I'm going to give you got to give some money for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know why, though, because the weekend, you're not really talking to them, right? Monday, you're catching up. Yeah, like crazy. crazy. So, I mean, that might be three days you talk to them. So, Tuesday, you guys are back on the phone making sure you're, yeah, yeah, we you're got, catching up with we them. We got a whole sales system, prospecting system. I like that. I'm still on that one. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing like videos that. for it now. We'll have it out for all our Shut Up and Invest members. Got we'll it. let you guys know when it's ready. It's being edited as we speak. So, that's the key, you guys. I mean, it's, it's it's not that difficult. It really isn't. You need to have some boots in the ground, but that's pretty much the process of every, of every deal. You know? Being able to get the deal. So, that's on the acquisition side. And then... We're going to get into in the next episode, how do we get rid of those deals, how we sell them, how we make money on them, how we do some seller financing on them, mm -hmm. how we find investors that want to take them off our hands and how we're flipping these contracts. Sounds good. All right, guys. If you Thank like you guys. that. Thank you. You already know. And uh, 
We're out. We're out. Time to do some more virtual wholesaling. Hey, thank you once again for listening to Shut Up and Invest. If you guys are motivated at the thought of continuing your real estate journey with us, then visit shutupandinvest.com. There you can join the community and take advantage of more free resources. And don't forget, please like, comment, and subscribe to this podcast so you're first to hear our new content every week. Most importantly, get active and don't forget to shut up and invest.